going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out and so I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. You just came with a few toys like a happy meal. If I can go back, I never would have rap. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. Still out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. Hi Team Resident Equations, welcome back if you're already resident here and welcome if you're new to this channel where we do weekly videos on current affairs, so on a Christian perspective, the prophetic work and the spoken word. So do hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. So we've seen some examples of people saying they sold their souls to the devil and sometimes it is unclear to know whether it's actually just a conspiracy, whether it's just a saying if there's any truth to it. However, I'm coming to let you know that actually there is definitely truth to it and how does the person actually sell their soul because sometimes it seems like oh some demon must have appeared to them or the devil himself must have appeared to them in their room and and made them sign a contract but it's actually much simpler than you think which makes it even more dangerous come with me to the book of revelations 18 11 to 14. so just a little intro before we get into the scriptures so at this point babylon lady in a scarlet and I say lady, it's actually the city, the spirit, the, the principality of Babylon um, being judged, receiving a judgment. Her end has come. She's burning. She's dying and um, being destroyed. And this is what it says. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron and marble and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and bodies and souls of men mm. and she carried she had the souls of men everything precious she had um, the gold the silver and the bodies and the souls of men you ask yourself you know people you say people sell their souls where do their souls go they are captured they're captured and on the judgment day and people actually purchase those, the devil purchases those. And, you know, the realm of the spirit is very deep and there's a lot of mysteries that you need to ask the Lord to open your eyes to reveal some of those to you. But we see from the scripture here that the souls of man are merchandise sold in the realms of the spirit. Mm. Another scripture says, you know, what does a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses its soul? Again, the transaction, you, what is your profit? It inclines a transaction. You've made a transaction that you lose your soul and gain the whole world. So those are usually done. Those transactions are done um, for gain, material gain. However, we know that the soul is more precious because your profit is actually a loss. A loss because those people often don't have the understanding of that implication that, that what they did is internal, eternal, and not just for today. But how do people actually sell their souls? How is it done? 
you be so surprised about how, sim how simple it is. People sell their souls by confessing and in their hearts surrendering their souls to the devil by saying, I submit my soul to you. I submit my soul to you. I submit my life to you. If you give me these riches, if you give me this, and you might say, how, how simple is that? That's not, that's, not, that's not it. It must be much more grandiose. It must have some kind of blood sacrifice. So it must be some grandiose things. And it's funny because those are some of the like blood sacrifices are some of the things that follow. But the actual initiation, the actual doing of it, is by confessing it with your mouth, giving in, in your soul and your spirit, in your heart, into that confession. And if you still think that's just too simple, ask yourself about your own salvation. Let's have a look at Romans 10, 9 to 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation okay so if you were saved today and you listen to me you would know that you gave your life to christ by simply confessing you simply said jesus i accept you as my lord and savior come into my heart write my name in the lamb's book of life and it was done you just did not just confess but you believed in your heart and that's all it took for you to be saved that it's all it took for your soul to be saved. Now your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the Holy Spirit has been given unto you. And you th and and think about it. Someone would have said that's a really easy transaction that you made. That's easy, isn't it? That's how easy salvation was. And that's how easy it is to sell your soul to the devil, confessing it and believing it and surrendering your heart to it. And then obviously... Those other things that come with it that I explained that come thereafter. But the initial thing has been done. The same way that after we are saved, you know, we've made that confession, the deed is done. But then we then go to be baptized in water. We then go and have communion, partake of the blood of Jesus um, with the wine and the bread. So there are other things that we do that come with that commitment and that's likewise there's other things that they do in the kingdom of darkness that come with making that commitment and so people give their life to the devil or give their souls to the devil for glitz and glam for when they're perhaps going through dark times and they say i just need to make that finance i just need to be wealthy i just need to be able to impress these people i need to prove these people wrong they make that transaction and it looks like they're living their best life but they're living the most miserable most bondaged most sickening life that you can ever live um plus having eternal condemnation and therefore i would encourage anyone who's even thinking about it to know that god gives wealth and riches but adds no sorrow.